start with the most important question. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to own July with Old and Pig? I decided about eight years ago that in 2021, I was going to own July. And I just said, I'm going to have these two movies. No, just kidding. I have no planning. It's just really luck. It's really exciting. And they're both movies that mean a lot to me, and they couldn't be more different characters. So I feel really lucky um, that, I, that I got to have this experience of having these two movies come out at the same time, um, around the same time. Um, hopefully people see them both and they don't get too sick of seeing my stupid mug on the screen. I really enjoyed Pig and I really enjoyed Old. So oh, thank I'm just, you so much. I'm just going to say uh, congrats on being part of two really good movies. Thank you uh, so much. That's so nice. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, a lot of questions. Um, let me yeah, just real, go ahead. real quick, though. What the hell was it like working with Nick Cage in Pig? And I know this is about Old. But like as a huge fan of Cage, I just have to know what the hell was that like? <laughs> He's been my favorite actor since I was a kid. When I when the trailer came out for Pig, I got messages from everybody that I've ever known saying, "Hey, is this a joke? Did you will this into existence?" Because I'd been talking about how, I mean, he, and I feel like a lot of people tend to say this after they work with people, and it always irritates me. But Nick knows that he really was like one of the main reasons I got into acting was like. I just remember as a kid seeing The Family Man and thinking it was the most brilliant performance, the way he molded that whole story. And then I just saw everything that he did in and, and adaptation just changed my life and leaving Las Vegas. And um, so Nick is my number one favorite actor. You know, I think he's just up there with just Nicholson and 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 De Niro and and like I think he's he could be in the category of like Liv Ullman and and um, you know p people from these foreign movies and um, so I I just adore him and also he's become really one of my best friends on the planet like um, you know I'm I'm ready to go to his big wedding in Japan and and uh, whenever that's going to be and he'll be the groomsman in my wedding if I ever get married um, he's just one of these guys we talk a few times a week and and um we were when we started working together we were both uh going through a similar time in our lives and kind of confided in each other and just got attached to the hip and i feel really really lucky to know him he's an incredible incredible artist more than a movie star he's an artist and he's a special special person it could choke me up talking about it i just i just i love him so much i, I he means so much to me Listen, that, first of all, that's awesome. Second of all, uh, I could talk about Nick the rest of the time, but let's jump into uh, why I actually yeah, get sorry, to talk a long answer, but it's Nick. No, 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 please. I, I Really, I could talk about Nick the whole time. But <clears throat> So one of the things, I, listen, I'm a big fan of, of Knight's movies. What do you think might surprise people to learn about the making of an M. Night film? Mm. Well, I think everything about this movie will surprise people, but I, I'd say that everybody would be surprised by... First of all, what a nice guy he is. And and um, I think they're surprised that this movie is really approached like it's a drama. And I think that that is what the movie more is, is, a, is sort of a psychological, <clears throat> philosophical, allegorical drama movie that, that, that gets very thrilling as it goes along. So I think um, people should go in expecting to be haunted, but in a more deep existential way than, than just some jump scares. Sure. I actually woke up this morning thinking about the movie, and that doesn't happen with me that often. Uh, what was your reaction? It's one of those. <clears throat> you know, like, yeah, what, I, what was I was waking up thinking about it for like six months. I mean, I, it, like when I first read the script before I even knew I had the part, I was um, waking up and, and dreaming about it and thinking about it and being scared um, of getting older and, and being scared facing my past. And I just think it's an incredible idea and an incredible delivery. This is his first time not shooting in Philadelphia. So what was it like actually being with him outside of his comfort zone? I think it's it's hugely metaphorical for how the movie is. I think that the movie is in some ways out of his comfort zone. I think it's I think it I think all his movies are really deep and all of them are really approach some larger concept and they're all really scary, but I believe that this movie goes deeper. I think this movie is the deepest movie he's ever made. I call it a Bergman blockbuster, and that's what he calls it too. It's kind of like, you know, it has echoes of persona and echoes of, you know, exterminating angels. And I think it's uh, just very exciting and, and a new chapter for him. This is an interesting performance because you're essentially playing a kid 
Uh, I'm, I'm curious, how do you get ready for playing a role like this? I mean, I'm already such a rambunctious guy. Uh, so, it, you know, I think I did a lot, a lot, a lot of research in terms of like reading Piaget and reading Bruno Bettelheim and reading a lot about child psychology and just even um, reading just about how uh, displacement and things and, and how kids see visually things are different and how that's kind of why they place their body in weird places and, and reading about all that was very helpful. But even more than that, I felt I had to I had to really face my fears of, of how I was as a kid. And I had to really look at myself and um, deal with the parts of myself that I've shut off. And that was hard, but, but it was, it was fun. You know, it was a really, I felt really lucky. It's like a, it's like a, a psychology, a thing, a psychology, an excuse to do something psychologically deep, you know, no, and it's completely. with M. Night Shyamalan. Listen, I, I'm curious what you paid to be in the movie. Um, I'm yeah, just... a lot. <laughs> uh, well, I know sold you, you all my recently... Game Boys. <laughs> you recently directed uh, you, a feature. I'm curious: Are you thinking about uh, doing another film soon? Yeah, I'm gonna do a movie with some really cool people that I can't talk about it yet, um, but it'll be probably announced soon. But we're gonna go next spring, um, or, or spring of 2022. So that's gonna be really. I'm really excited for that. Um, but yeah, if, uh, I'm. Thank you. I hope yeah, you guys have seen. I think you did. You wrote a really nice review for Cat in the Moon, so I appreciated that. Did you? Are you? Did you write this next one? Yeah, I wrote it. I'm gonna be directing it, and then I'm I'm not starring in it, but I'm co-acting in it. Um, you know, it's it's always a little embarrassing to do all that stuff, but it's just these certain stories. I just want it told a certain way, so. Uh, I completely understand. Obviously, the Jumanji movies have been a little bit what we call popular. Are you a little surprised <laughs> at the popularity? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like a reboot to have it explode like that. It's crazy, but it's The Rock. I mean, everybody wants to see The Rock and, and its big, gorgeous muscles and being hilarious. And, and um, yeah, so I guess I wasn't, I wasn't surprised that people loved him so much, but I was surprised that so many people went for the both movies. I just, I just thought the luck of that is just one in a million. Uh, I have to stop there. I'm just going to say congrats on everything. And oh, thank uh, good you luck so much. Everything.